nice to get a slightly warmer welcome in here than I got when I walked outside to try and go across to the Hilton at lunchtime, um, which wasn't terribly friendly of a, a group of uh, uh, people uh, waiting outside. Um, <clears throat> I'm really sorry that um, you're having to listen to me twice um, today. At least this time I get to say what I want to say rather than responding to questions that are being asked. I really, um, around the area of policy, I, I wanted to start really by explaining who we are as a company for those of you that don't know and then to actually go through some of the best benefits that we think are around um, the UK's overall position in, in history, in land, in community and how we do, can deal with policy and how we can use that to form policy. And I think a lot of that comes out of things that have been um, said earlier on in the course of the day about the ways in which um, we interact with those around us, with our detractors, with our supporters with the politicians that, that govern um, with the local communities in which we have to operate. So just a little bit of a brief background on iGas. We were formed 10 years ago. Um, <clears throat> we're listed in the London stock market, um, in the AIM section of the London stock market. We um, operate around 30 fields across the country. Um, most of those fields were drilled in the, uh, in the 80s and 90s. Um, and we, we produce just over 3,000 barrels a day. Um, Roughly half of that is in the Weald Basin in the south of England, which, um, as we all know, we're waiting for the BGS to come back with some numbers as to what they feel the shale oil potential is in that particular area. Um, there we operate in some pretty sensitive sites, including inside national parks. Our Singleton Field, um, which is just north of Chichester, um, is um, very close to Goodwood. Um, our, landlord is the, um, our landlord is the Forestry Commission. It's a very sensitive area, um, area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, and we've been operating there for the last, uh, well, the, the field has been operated for about the last 15 years successfully, and many people in the village aren't even aware it's there. 500 barrels a day, sen um, sensitive vehicle movements, um, and um, a, a continuing business. We operate in the East Midlands, um, where we have um, a gathering centre just outside Lincoln. Um, we also have another gathering centre over towards Gainsborough. At that Gainsborough site, the, our landlord is the Environment Agency. Um, and um, uh, we produce about another 1,300-odd uh, barrels between the fields in, in Welton and Gainsborough. Most of those were drilled by BP back in the, um, the mid-1980s. Um, moving to the northwest of England, we have a series of fields um, which stretch from Manchester across to Liverpool and out onto the Wirral, bounded broadly by the M62 to the north and the M56 to the south, which is where we've been looking at coal bed methane and shale gas exploration. Uh, we have a site at Doe Green, just outside Warrington, where we've been producing coal bed methane for the last four or five years um, and generating electricity and powering local homes, and then injecting the electricity back into the grid. Um, we would recently drilled a well at a place called Barton Moss, which is uh, near Salford, um, uh, which was a shale appraisal well, um, and um, we encountered a very significant shale section and um, await the results of the... Uh, uh, the analysis of the, of the cores, etc. there. We also drilled further to the west from there at a place called Ince Marshes, which is near to Ellesmere Port, um, uh, about 18 months ago, and again saw a, um, a very thick shale section. Um, we also operate in Scotland. We have a field, um, an onshore to offshore field called Leibster, um, uh, which we bought from Caithness Petroleum at the back end of last year. That produces around 200 barrels a day, um, and that oil is trucked down to the NIG terminal um, and um, is, is blended with uh, a product from Beatrice, which you can actually see Beatrice from the cliffs. That well um, goes from onshore to offshore, um, and uh, to my knowledge is the only producing well in Scotland, um, uh, oil well in Scotland right now. Um, as was referred to earlier on today, we made an announcement on Friday um, that we've agreed with the board of um, uh, Dart Energy in Australia to acquire Dart Energy. Um, DART has a number of blocks across the country and um, has a, uh, uh, executed a farming agreement in the back end of last year with GDF on, uh, I think it's 13 uh, separate blocks. And those are adjacent pieces of acreage to, to where we are. Uh, so we look forward to working with um, uh, GDF on that product, project. Um, uh, we also operate on behalf of Total um, in um, the East Midlands. And in fact, as part of the DART acquisition, we'll be deepening our position in those particular, particular licenses, uh, pedals 139 and 140, which are in the um, Bassett Law um, area of, um, 
Bassett Law constituency just outside Worksop. Um, for those of you that listen to um, any questions on Radio 4, on Friday night that came from Worksop and um, there was a very interesting and actually quite well informed debate um, on the program and um, um, Dimpleby, as he often does in these things, actually took a straw poll of the audience and the majority of the audience in that constituency was supportive of shale gas, which I think is really um, uh, um, uh, good news and supportive um, and I'm sure will bring a smile to um, our, our partners in that licence, although I think Egdon are already in the audience and I think they've got a smile on their face today anyway on the basis of another transaction which has been announced in the sector. Um, so let's just talk about history in the country and, and, and slightly that comes through to what I was just saying. The UK has got a long history of onshore oil and gas production. The largest onshore oil and gas field in Europe is in the UK as we know. Um, it's a witch farm and um, very long, lengthy laterals have been drilled on that site. Um, those wells have been fracked in the past um, and that's been done again in a highly sensitive area. Um, I think uh, certainly the laterals uh, go underneath National Trust land. I think um, BP originally purchased some of that land so it's owned directly by the operator. But you know, producing now under Perenco's operatorship around 20,000 barrels a day. Um, the fields that we operate in the East Midlands were a very vital part, the early stages of that were a very vital part of the war effort. Their proximity to um, um, uh, the air bases that were used um, by Bomber Command in um, dealing uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the threat of uh, Germany during 39-45 was actually supported in a large part by oil production from, from that area. Um, in the south, some of the first wells were drilled actually on the top of Portsdown Hill in Portsmouth, where I was born, um, um, into what you can see as a very natural anticline if you, um, uh, if you, if you look at the, even the surface geology, a geography, um, and, um, and produced in that area. And again, all the way from Stockbridge and Winchester in the west across to Gatwick and Palmer's Wood, Palmer's Wood field being the field that um, uh, was behind the... Um, 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 uh, the uh, Bracado judgment um, in the case between uh, Star Energy which we acquired about four years ago, uh, three years ago um, and uh, Mohammed El Fayed. So the UK has got a long history of doing this and doing it safely. Into that also, the UK has also had a long history of domestic um, uh, minerals extraction, whether it's oil in the North Sea, whether it's coal, actually transforming the economy at strategic points in the country's history. The changes that happened in this country in the 1980s would not have been possible if it hadn't have been for um, uh, North Sea oil. Um, and, you know, obviously the Industrial Revolution and, and, and the role of coal in the past is, is, is very clearly understood. And so let's not underestimate the opportunity for Britain in actually being able to see whether we can um, win the social license to operate as well as um, challenging and conquering the geology to make sure that we can get shale gas to work in this country. Land and land rights. Many people sit and say that the problem with and the impediment to um, the UK um, is the fact that people don't immediately own the land underneath their homes and the mineral rights underneath their homes and that that actually can constrict the development because it's actually that retransfer of wealth through um, uh, people, you know, oil companies, uh, gas companies buying up royalties that has actually um, promoted the growth that's gone on in the States. I'm not sure that's the case. Because actually what that can do is provide, you know, if you are in a place where a farmer who owns several hundred acres um, gets extremely wealthy as a consequence of owning the minerals underneath laterals that are being drilled, and the farm worker whose cottage the trucks um, uh, drilling and fracking those wells at the end of the, um, uh, the lane gets nothing, um, he is going to have a very different attitude towards planning. And the whole situation gets stymied um, in a very different way. So I don't think it's as clear-cut as saying that actually the impediment here is the nature of land ownership. I think the impediment as it stands at the moment is the way in which we engage with people and the way in which we get that social license to operate and the way in which the, the um, industry um, gets its message across. And that leads into my next point around community. And it is about how we define the community and how we put that community benefit back in. The comment was made earlier on that you know, we have community benefits, we have this agreement between the industry um, and, um, and government that 
um, £100,000 will be paid on every frac tested well um, and 1% of revenues uh, through the production phase. The way in which we distribute that money needs to be done sensitively. And we as an industry have been going out and doing some polling on this right now. And this is not simply about taking money off bills of those people most closely affected. Because the way in which you define community at that point will again be divisive. So I think it's about all the things that we were talking about this morning. It's about jobs. It's about direct benefits. It's about rates. We at iGas were one of the uh, big supporters of making sure that we got into a place where we get 100% uh, local rates retention for um, uh, uh, onshore drilling. In time, I think that will become a very important part of the equation. That can be £6 million a year per site. If a local council in its area is looking at maybe five to ten um, sites within that area, then you're 30 to 60 million pounds better off straight into the budget. That can make a material difference to a local council's budget in that area. And I'm not sure that point has been fully understood yet. So when that is then combined with direct community benefits, when that's combined with um, other contributions from the industry in terms of local employment, I think we can start having a package of offerings to the local community along with giving this, them the confidence, and the, safety, uh, the confidence in the safety and the environmental integrity of what we're doing that can actually enable this social license to operate. So I think that is really, really important. And it's not one thing. There is not one silver bullet in here which makes this work or unlocks this. And it may well indeed vary from different parts of the country. What works in, um, in the Wirral may not work in Worksop. Yeah. What works in Manchester may not work um, uh, in Reigate. Um, this, this is going to be very differently driven in different places. Um, and we're also going to have issues around the Scottish um, position as well. We have different regulators. We have different land rights. We have a different planning regime. So in our acquisition of um, um, uh, DART, a proposed acquisition of DART, we have, um, uh, we, we have the interest in the F Colbert Methane Project and potentially the shale underneath that in, um, in the central belt in Scotland. Um, and obviously, one only has to look at the history of Edinburgh um, to understand that there is considerable um, um, uh, potential in the, um, in the shales that, that, that lie in that area. But again, this is a different regulator, and de depending on the outcome of the vote in, um, in mid-September, um, we'll be taking a different position in different, in different areas. So, um, the community has to be brought on board. Community is not defined. This is not saying there is no such thing as community. Um, this is saying um, it's going to be different in different places, and we're going to have to work different methodologies in different places to get people engaged, to appeal to the right needs. Mention was made this morning um, around standards and regulatory processes and the, the recommendations that came out of the, um, um, uh, of the RSPB um, National Trust report. And there were 10 recommendations that came out of that. And actually, if you go back and look at those 10 recommendations, by far the majority of them have actually been dealt with in terms of um, the way in which you are, operate in sensitive areas, the way in which you engage with the water industry, the way in which um, you deal with uh, light and noise pollution and, and minimizing of vehicle movements. We are all, as an industry, and in fact, there will have been a number of them um, uh, around the tables, conversations over lunch and in other places where um, industry individuals are sitting down together talking about best practice, working out how to um, minimize vehicle movements, trying to come up with novel solutions using railways, using the canal system, etc., to move things um, around the country in a sensitive way. So um, we, we mentioned again in the session this morning around data sharing. But not only data sharing in terms of what goes on at the subsurface, but in terms of best practice at the surface. The industry has signed up to a, um, a code of best practice which is available on um, uh, UCOOG's website for anyone to read, which I think will take you through exactly how we minimize, are uh, looking to minimize these, um, uh, these sensitivities that are required for us to be able to engage. And really, I just wanted to list through a number of the people and organizations who have in total come back and said, if shale gas is done in a well-regulated way, 
It can be done safely, and it can be done with minimal impact on the environment. And those organizations include the EA, the Health and Safety Executive, the Minimal Planning Authorities, Department of en Energy and Climate Change. We have to um, uh, work within the confines of 17 separate EU directives. The Royal Society, the British Geological Survey, um, the, Water and, uh, the Chartered Institute of Water and Environment Management, um, Water UK, Public Health England, and various reports out of academic institutions, including Keele University and Dum Durham University. So there is a body of peer-reviewed, independent thought out there which says this can be done sensibly and safely. There is also an awful lot of hysteria which we have to deal with on a daily basis. But let's just get back to those three central points. History, we've been doing this a long time. Land, this does not need to result and will not result in an industrialization of the landscape. And the, the, the land rules are in place. Yes, tidying up the situation around trespass would be extremely helpful, but the Bricado judgment does exist. There is a position there right now. Community, we have to engage with community. This battle will not be won with central government. This battle will be won locally with local government and local opinion formers. One of the biggest areas we have to work on is, is getting the confidence of the women of Britain. If you actually look at the split and the demographics of how people look at um, uh, shale gas and, and, um, and the dreadful word fracking, um, it is very heavily swung in, in terms of the negative views towards women. And so we need to address that um, and give them confidence because they are the ones that, um, that regulate um, uh, sort of the sustainable side of, um, of, of, um, of, of any of any economy of any nation, and it's just it's just in the in 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 the in the in the DNA. So we need policy. We need policy that helps. We need. We talked about streamlining um, of regulation, but as um, Tom Geetrich said earlier on, he said, um, I don't like this talk about um, reducing regulation. Let me be absolutely clear. The industry is not asking for a reduction in regulation. We absolutely have to earn our spurs that we can do this with the existing regulation and with the confidence that that will bring through, um, um, uh, through, through complying with it. What we are talking about is post that, working out ways without reducing the, um, um, the level of regulation, that this, the, the regulatory process itself can be simplified. That is all. The industry is not asking for a reduction in regulation. Um, and finally, regulating these things, running extractive industries, is something that Britain is good at. We were the first movers in the North Sea, and that's given us, A, a lot of wealth for the country, and secondly, um, gave us the centers of excellence like Aberdeen um, and Great Yarmouth, which have grown out of all proportion from the fishing villages they were as a consequence of being there at the beginning supplying um, um, uh, 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 an early stage industry. That prize is out there for some part of the UK right now in terms of the shale gas industry. The UK is good at regulation. We need to be proud of what we are good at. We are good at um, uh, the oil and gas services business. Um, it is a center of excellence in this country. Let's um, make uh, the application of onshore gas, both shale gas and coal bed methane, um, the new centre of excellence in the UK, and let's make it uh, work for Britain. So thank you very much indeed.